guys, welcome back to Backwoods Boys here. We're uh, bringing you another episode. As you can see behind me, our wood wall has kind of dwindled over the last <laughs> week or two. So we're gonna cut some firewood, figure we gotta do it anyway. Might as well have you guys along and show you how we do it and what we do. First off, we have a chainsaw here, but from the last time I used it, I know that the chain is dull on it. It takes a long time to cut through a log. So we're gonna sharpen it quick. We do a lot of individual tooth sharpening with a file. For our chainsaws but I have a special chain and bar on this one uh, that allows a very fast sharpen it's for trail clearing where you don't want to take a whole lot of time you actually just clip this on so you open it up here it's got a, a stone in here that runs the teeth through and these clip into the blade like so this snaps shut then I'll start the chainsaw and push it against anything. I'll use the ladder here. Just lightly so that just so we get a few sparks showing and hold it for about three seconds. That's running the teeth of the chain alongside that stone in there. And take it off and it's good to go for a good long while again. So we'll just do that here quick before we get started. And it's as simple as that. You saw the sparks coming out there, hopefully. The chain is sharp and ready to go. So we'll take this off and get started. just gonna buck this log up into lengths for the stove. I'm gonna toss them into a pile and we'll split them in a little bit here. So just gonna get them all blocked up first. Yeah. Yeah. 
just ran out of fuel. We're gonna go fuel up off camera. And the cameras are all running low on battery. We're at about minus 35 today. Battery doesn't last long. So we're gonna fuel up, let the cameras charge and knock a few more trees down off camera. And we'll get back to you when it's time to split all this stuff. So see you in a few minutes. Hey everyone, we got everything dropped and chopped. Uh, we took down two stumps, one more after the camera di cameras died on us. Uh, it's actually not a, not a whole lot of wood, but it'll probably last us two months because we hardly go through any of this wood in any given day. Even when it's really cold, we'll only go through a couple of these blocks. So we're going to split it so we don't have to do that later on. We'll stack it along here. We figured we'd just give some tips uh, on how to split. I mean, I know most people already know all this, but eh, you never know. It's... Uh, you can always learn something new and there's new people learning about living off grid so figured we'd offer some tips and tricks for this now the first thing to remember is using the right axe most people or a lot of people just think an axe is an axe they'll all split wood and yeah to some extent they'll all split wood but the effort that goes into it is a big difference this is our old axe this is the one we used to use just an old one from I don't know Canadian tire or something lost the rubber handle and it'll chop I mean it'll split it takes some work but it does go but almost always needing multiple hits now that's because this blade the head on this axe is it's a pretty big wedge the edge piece on it's pretty well straight so when you hit with this edge all of that axe has to break through at once so it'll do the job in an emergency but it's not the best option this is my favorite one this one we got from our uncle Carrie, and it's a really nice rounded edge both of them and the way the round is it actually only hits with a fraction of the blade at first and as it sinks more cuts so you're never pushing with the full weight and the full surface area of that head I'm gonna just get another one set up here Let's see how this goes it is a very nice axe just cuts through these like butter and again that's because of the shape of the head with that round piece that so it's not never pushing the whole piece of the head through at once also all that weight it's a nice heavy one it just carries itself through which is really handy of course it doesn't hurt it's about minus 30 minus 30 35 right now and so the colder it is the better wood splits Now there's a few different things to remember when splitting besides the type of axe. One of them is the grain. You can look at the top of any stump and you'll see which way the grain is running. And you always want to split with the grain. So the head of the axe is running parallel with the grains. That'll split easier. You also want to watch for any knots. Uh, you don't want to split right on any knots. And if there's any weaknesses, any cracks starting, either for drying and crafting or just growing strange if you can line the axe up on one of those cracks it'll split extra easily now this one is full of knots and it's really impossible to avoid them so it's a little tougher going but the right axe just cuts through anyway and there we go we got enough wood for a month and a half or two months here doesn't take very long when you just sit down and get at it. Cold day, so the wood splits splits easy. Uh, wood splits easy and beards frost up. Yeah, yeah. You use the right axe and a sharp chainsaw, and it goes pretty quick. So that's, I mean, it doesn't hurt having a tiny little cabin that doesn't take much heat. So we'll see you back in the cabin. The fire we let go out so we could do this ash emptying. You'll see here. We had quite a bit of ash piled up in there. It uh, it just really affects how the fire burns, and due, basically due to the fact that the dampers are down low, 
you want it to have lots of airflow in there. And when your ashes pile up, you lose that airflow. So we're going to show you emptying this out. And the reason that this is piled up so much is we've been burning poplar, which when it, uh, when it burns, it leaves this very fluffy ash, which stacks up very quickly. Pine, spruce, it doesn't, doesn't do that. Mine do it, coats the chimney with curacet and you risk a chimney fire. You want the fire to be out. This has been out for a while. It's just a little bit of heat radiating out of that, but I'm not too worried. Use whatever little shovel is nice if you have one of those little poker sets by your fire. We don't, so we had a little container here that our aunt sent up with some food in it, and that was empty, so we're just using the scoop shovel. And a good thing to remember in this is not to take out all the ash. It is actually good to have some ash in the bottom. So you just want to take out enough to let it breathe again properly. And also an important thing to note, and remember if you're doing it, probably not the brightest idea to leave it for the coldest day of the year so far to let your fire go out. We're, uh, we're pretty chilly in here tonight. So I've got probably two thirds of this full of ash out of here. You see I left a layer of ash in there. That's, uh, that keeps it from burning out the bottom. You don't want the bottom of your stove to burn out. That's a very nasty wake up in the middle of the night. So keep a layer in there just for safety's sake, but it's much lower, much more room up to where the damper level is. That'll have the fire burning a lot better. So the fire's going, it's warming up in here. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We, uh, we had some fun doing it, we got some cool shots. Now we can enjoy it warming up a little bit in here. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe. As usual, if you have any questions or any thoughts, by all means, please put them in the comments. We love hearing from you guys. And other than that, I think we will just say goodbye for now and we'll see you in the next episode. See ya. Mm -hmm.